Let's have a look at this together because I've got to give you an additional instruction now for what to do with what you've done. We've got the graph of y equals sine x on here. Okay, and what I want to put on top of this, in much the same way that we did this here, I want to kind of superimpose what the gradient function looks like, like on the exponential and the log, but we're going to do this for y equals sine x, and then hopefully you'll actually be able to see um, how we do this for the others, okay? We said right at the beginning there, when x equals zero, so that's the, um, that's the first one, right? It looked pretty clear to all of us that the gradient was equal to one, yeah? So you can see where one is on this, it's up there, up the top. So what I'd love you to do, and if you have another color, that's just a bonus, but I get to cheat and use 16.7 million colors. Go ahead and put an x corresponding to x equals zero, put a little x mark up at one. So this, this purple is gonna indicate my derivative, or my gradient, I should say, at each point, okay? So when x equals zero, so that's why you can see I'm vertically above the origin there, the gradient is equal to one. And then as I go along, I'm gonna get different gradients. Now, I'm gonna skip right over to this one here first because um, hopefully a lot of you did it and it's also easy. At this spot up here, if you draw the tangent, what does it look like? It's just, yeah, very good. It's horizontal, right? Now, horizontal line has a gradient of zero so because there's no rise, right? So it's no rise over run. So therefore, back with my original color and where my x is gonna go, this value here, well, by the way, what is this x equals? x equals, you can actually see if I zoom out a little bit, if this is pi over here on the right, then I'm kind of right in the middle of this hill, as it were, so it should be pi divided by two, right? So in fact, I'll just, um, don't wanna make this too busy, but drawing vertically down, I've got at x equals pi on two, I've got my gradient being equal to zero. Okay, so remember, vertically, we're saying where it is, zero. Pi on two is where it is horizontally. Now I wanna understand what's going on in the middle. Okay, now what I'd love you to give me is, can you supply me an x value, like say 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 or whatever it happens to be? Oh, that's a bit cheeky, isn't it? That really should be 0 0.4. Did you guys notice that and just no one picked me up on it? You did, you said, I was not saying anything, like, Say it, Mr. Wu, you're wrong. Like, come on, like, throw a sharp implement at me or something like that. Um, pick an x value, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, whatever it is, and can you tell me what the gradient is? And I'm gonna plot it, and we're all gonna plot it together, in fact. If someone got some x value between naught and, I mean, that's like 1.57-ish, and you can provide me a gradient. Any takers? Come on, I just gave you like seven, eight minutes for this. You can find a spot, any spot, and it's just a measurement. Anyone? I'll give you a clue, the gradient's gonna be between one and zero, because <laughs> somewhere you can see it's gonna be less than one, that's the steepest it gets, and zero is the shallowest it gets in that section. What do you think? I'm not gonna have to do one like on the spot, come on guys. All right, fine, we're doing this. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna pick a spot like say here, right? Uh, that's, what does that look like? 1.2, 1.2. And when you have a look at the gradient there, if I draw that up like so, now this is all like busy and crowded because I was relying on you guys, but well, uh, if you wanted to get something done, do it yourself. Um, have a look, I've picked out this measurement at 0 0.4 across. And when you do this vertically, right? When you do this vertically, does that almost look like one full square? It's just kind of offset, yeah? So I think we said that's like 0 0.2 or so. Okay, so therefore, if I do rise over run, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.4, what's the value that you get? 0 0.2 divided by, zero. okay, I refuse to not take a volunteer for this one because we can do this, we learned this in like year seven and eight. 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.4, you're all gonna tell me aloud together. Count of three, one, two, three. Thank you, so you did know. Okay, so for a half, this is the gradient I'm expecting, okay? I'm gonna plot with purple where a half is, which looks like it's around there, yeah? Except it corresponds to about this spot, like so, okay? Now, because I actually know the graph, because I've done this a million times that I'm going to be looking for, I know where the rest of these points are roughly gonna go, and I invite you now, even if you're not gonna tell me what they are, I can't ask you because you have all different spots, but you're gonna end up with values somewhat like this, 
right? Do you see this kind of, uh, this, this line that I can plot through? It's not a straight line though, is it, right? It's not straight. It's sort of got this gentle curve to it. And as you go along, see at this spot here, this is an easy one. Tell me what gradient you measured when you went to x equals pi. It's negative one, because look, you're, you're decreasing, and really, there's this huge amount of symmetry in the trigonometric graphs, right? So it's really the opposite of the positive one you measured at the origin. Here's a negative one, right? So therefore, I'm going to get something down here, um, and you're going to have, again, values sort of much like this, right? So again, if you look at where my purple x's are, and you're going to have some x's flowing as well, you get from 1 all the way down to negative 1, but you don't get there via a straight line, do you? Right? It's this kind of wiggly curve. Can you go ahead and join the dots for me and tell me what you think that looks like? I'm going to do my best. If you've got a pencil there, it's obviously tons easier. But I'm not too dissatisfied with that. What do you think? So look roughly like the points that you've got. And again, just referencing this symmetry that we said before, right? See how between 0 and pi, you're going up and then going down. Which corresponds to the fact that the gradient is, let's have a look at it, the gradient is positive here, and then it's negative here, right? Going up, going down. You get exactly the same thing, but backwards over here, between pi and 2 pi. Do you see that? You're going down then you're going up, and that should correspond to a gradient that is negative and then positive. So again, I'm going to pop a few points on here that I'm aware of. So here I should be 0. Back here I should be up to 1 again. Again, you can put a few more x's on here if you want, but I already know where I'm headed, so I'm going to do my best to thread that needle. No, I can do better than that. Let's try again. Are you happy with that? Is that reasonably satisfactory? So what have we done here, right? We've been trying to gain intuition for what the derivative of sine x, which is in black, looks like. This is my gradient function in purple. This is my dy on dx, at least an approximation of it. Please tell me you recognize that this purple graph looks like something you've been dealing with for a long time. What is it? That's, that's cosine, right? At least it looks suspiciously a lot like it should be cosine. It goes from the same values, starts at the same spot, goes down to the same spot. You can even put it into your calculator and verify these values, okay? Now, we actually can do this symbolically, but I actually think for now it's not necessary. This intuition is enough. So if what you wanted was a heading from before, go to your book now, and you can stick that piece of paper in somewhere nearby. The heading is differentiating trigonometric functions. And what we've got an intuition for now is that if you differentiate sine x, what you end up with is cos x. Like what else could that be? It's got, or it goes through all the right points. It's also periodic, just like sine is, right? So like sine keeps on going and going, the gradient of sine will also keep going and going, just at a slightly different spot. Okay, now underneath this, we have this question of, well, this is not the only trigonometric function, right? We said all of the rest of them would come along for the ride. So underneath this, this time, I'm gonna ask you, to provide the graph. You did just draw cos x, so hopefully we can do a reasonably good job of it. Here's cos x, it's this valley looking shape from naught to 2 pi. What would the gradient of this look like? I'm gonna ask you to have a go and plot again where those values are going to be. I'll give you some clues. There are easy spots where you can see the gradient is just like the graph that you just did, right? For example, can you tell me there's three x values, and you can look up on the board for me, right? There are three x values where you can immediately see the gradient will be zero. The tangent will be horizontal, the gradient will be zero. Can you give me those three x values just by looking at it? I mean, I've actually already given you one of them. Go ahead, yeah. Zero. Very good. There's a horizontal tangent right there. Pi, which I haven't marked in. 
there's a horizontal tangent right there. And then the last one's 2 pi, right? You can draw that horizontal tangent. So therefore, for those three points, 0 pi and 2 pi, the gradient, I'm going to put the x's here again to indicate gradient, should be 0. But what about in between those spots? What will the gradient look like for this section from 0 to pi? For this section from pi to 2 pi? Take a couple of minutes, draw it onto a graph just like I have, put your x's and then join the dots and tell me what you think that looks like. Okay, did you get something that looks roughly like this? I haven't threaded the needle yet, but you can see before I go on to there, you can see why I've gotten these values. Between x equals zero and x equals pi, the gradient has to be negative. Can you see that? How do you know? When you look at the graph, how do you know it has to be negative? Yeah, it's slanting down. That's what negative gradient means, right? You start high, you end up low. So that's why all of these green X's are negative. They're below the axis because the gradient is negative. So you end up with something rather like that. Oh, that's not bad, okay? Now when you go to the other side, this is all positive. You see, you're entirely climbing through this section, but it's sort of like climbing at different rates, right? Have a look at this with me. When we differentiated visually the sine curve, we ended up with cos. This is us trying that same trick on cos. This green graph though, what is that green graph? Because this green graph, <clears throat> it's not, there we go, it's not this sine x curve, is it? Because the sine x curve goes up first and then it comes down. What is this? It's, it's this, but upside down. Do you agree? Think back to graphing. This is not sine x. This is dy on dx equals minus sine x. It's the upside down version. Does that make sense? So this is a little bit weird. You can see this is going to be a little bit tricky on your memory as you start to learn and memorize these rules, but you can see it visually. Why you get this result, it flips around versus this one, okay? One last one before I then send you on a very, very brief break. Sine and cos, and then in year nine you learnt one other basic trig function, which was tan. Now, I highlighted the fact, in fact, I'm going to go there right now. I highlighted the fact that tan is an abbreviation. It's actually, tan is really shorthand for sine over cos. Now some of you are going to be like, oh no, Mr. We don't do it to me. And I am going to do it to you, right? That function there is a fraction. It's a fraction. When you have a function you're differentiating that looks like a fraction, you did it just this morning, twice I think. What rule do you use? It's, it's a quotient, so you use the quotient rule. So I'm going to call this u. I'm going to call this v, and we're going to work out the derivative together. Here we go. It's going to be v u dash minus u v dash all over v squared. Let's do it step by step. v. That's just going to be cos x. What's u dash? Have a look. This is, oopsie daisy. If that's u, then u dash is just going to be cos v u dash. Take away, u is sine x, and if this is v cos x, then what is v dash? It's minus sine x. This is looking weird and symmetrical, and then lastly, all on the denominator, it's a really bad line, but sorry, it's going to be v squared, right? So we would write that as cos squared x. All right, let's tidy this, this kind of mess up, right? Up in the top, cos x times cos x, you could write that as cos squared. What happens to those negatives? They cancel. So you just get sine squared x. Does that look familiar? Think back to the identities that you've learned. What's cos squared plus sine squared equal to? Yeah, that's equal to one. If that's kind of like, wait a second, where did that come from? I will come back to this identity later on. It's the Pythagorean identity, super important. And this, I'm happy with, but um, again, mathematicians being famously lazy, we say, I've got a name for this when you've got cos on the denominator. It's one of these um, reciprocal functions. 
Now, I don't know if some of you have encountered this before, but there's a really easy way to remember which reciprocal is which. Does anyone know what that trick is? Yeah? Yeah, it's completely coincidental, which I don't like. There's no reason for it, really. But if you look at that third letter there, sine, cos, tan. So I want cos, which is this one, right? So therefore, you would write this as sec squared x. That's the derivative. 